Welcome back to Track History, the series where we take a deep dive into the circuits that shape the world of racing. I'm Daniel Arena, a professional video editor and a lifelong motorsports fan. In my first episode, I covered the thrilling history of Daytona International Speedway. If you want to check out the episode, go down to the description and click on the link below. Today, we are staying in Florida and checking out a legendary track, Sebring International Raceway, home of the 12 hours of Sebring. Sebring International Raceway have been the cornerstone of endurance racing since the 1950s. World War II witnessed the emergence of a third dimension in warfare, in which the air became a primary theater of operation in addition to the land and the sea. Sebring's origins trace back to World War II. The raceway was a former army airbase. Established in 1941, Hendricks Army Airfield was named in honor of the first lieutenant, Liard Woodruff Hendricks, a courageous aviator who gave his life in service to his country during World War I. During World War II, the airfield played a critical role as a training base for bomber crews, especially for flying the iconic B-17 and B-26 aircraft. 12 flying fortresses carrying about 18 tons of bombs, destined for railroad marshalling yards at Rouen. This was the initial test of the air offensive by day against the powerful German Air Force. The long runways and spacious airspace made ideal location for training essential skills for demanding missions that they will face in combat. After World War II, one man saw potential in the abandoned runways of Hendricks Army Airfield. That man was Alec Allman, a Russian-American engineer with a vision of repurposing military aircraft for civilian use. Allman saw an opportunity to transform the vast land of Hendrix into something extraordinary. They staged for a sports car endurance race. So on New Year's Eve of 1950, Sebring International Raceway was born. 30 race cars from across North America arrived on the airfield for the first event the Sam Collar Six Hour Memorial Race. The race was a spectacle, with the drivers pushing their machines and themselves to the limit. But that was just the beginning. The 12 Hours of Sebring was born on March 15, 1952, quickly becoming a major international race that attracted the top teams and drivers from around the world. In 1959, Sebring made history once again by hosting the United States Grand Prix. But poor attendance and high costs eventually led the race being relocated to Riverside Raceway in California. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to cover Riverside in a future episode of Track History. Over the decades, Sebring has hosted countless legendary moments from thrilling battles on the track to heartbreaking defeats. Sebring's track surface is one of the most iconic aspects of the track. The challenging layout, which includes a bumpy concrete and asphalt sections, as well as long straights and tight corners. Star finish line as they head into the first corner with Gresham Wagner just about holding on to the lead, coming through from the second row, the second of the red white cars. Michael Carter in the zero eight for Carter Racing Enterprises. Has he elbowed his way through? He has. The 12 hours of Sebring has a storied history, making one of the oldest endurance races in the United States. This is such a tough test, and the green flag flies here at Sebring. Let's go! Durrani gets the jump, and Ricky Taylor aboard that blue and black Konica Minolta Acura goes with him. Slides it to the outside, battle for the lead through turn one. Taylor side by side with Durrani. These two guys are old foes, old opponents in the IMSA WeatherTech Championship, and Taylor tucks back into second. Originally conceived as a way to show American racing talent 
and attract international competitors. The event quickly gained traction and become a cornerstone of global motorsports calendar. Each year, teams around the world converge onto Sebring to tackle the grueling 12-hour endurance challenge. A Jaguar wearing the white and blue stripes that are American racing colors leads a pack of cars through the hairpin. From sunrise to sunset, the drivers push themselves and their machines to the limit, navigating the bumpy and demanding circuit with precision and skill. Over the years, Sebring has seen its fair share of memorable moments and historic victories. From iconic cars and legendary drivers to nail-biting finishes and dramatic comebacks. On the inside by Gresham Wagner and somehow he's got back to the front but can he keep the car on the straight and narrow? It's going to be one, two, three wide. It's another black and finish. Round three of the Intermittent 2 Master MX-5 Cup. They've all won it. They've all won it. Sebring has left an incredible mark on the world of motorsports. Now let's dive into Sebring's unique layout. The full circuit, the short circuit, and the club circuit. The full circuit is the main attraction, with 17 turns, long straights, and a mix of high-speed technical corners. But what sets Sebring apart from other racetracks around the world it is its rough and bumpy surface from World War II. Much of the track still runs on its old concrete landing fields, complete with large seams and rough transition between sections. These challenge conditions can make Sebring notorious for being tough on both machinery and drivers. And that's how easy it is. There's the oh, he's oh, off no. again. Oh! oh, a huge off. He had no steering. The front was going under the car. And let's not forget about the nighttime challenge. With poorly marked section and minimal lighting, finding your way around Sebring can be a daunting task. Sebring remains a favorite among drivers and fans alike, with its unique blend of history, excitement, and the sheer adrenaline. So next time when you watch the 12 hours of Sebring or tackle the track on your favorite racing game, remember the rich history that Sebring brings and its challenging course that makes it a truly legendary track. Now picture this, NASCAR Cup cars tearing up the track at Sebring on its bumpy surface. I think Sebring will be a perfect location for a race for NASCAR if the streets of Chicago race ever goes away. I believe NASCAR Cup racing at Sebring could be a game changer. With the current location at Sebring being very close to two popular NASCAR tracks in the area, it could be very challenging for NASCAR adding a third race in Florida. And while NASCAR does own the circuit, the idea of hosting a NASCAR Cup race at Sebring may seem like a distant dream. Before we wrap up, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit that ring bell so you'll be notified on future episodes. Share your thoughts and memories about Sebring in the comments below. Let me know what tracks you want me to cover in future episodes of Track History. I want to hear from you. I'll see you in my next video. Take care.